Hello and welcome. This is Nick from the Nocturnal Rambler doing another live stream and let's play. This time it's Gothic 3, the sequel to one of, well really two of my favorite games of all time, Gothic 1 and 2. So if you're watching this now, it's being live streamed on Twitch and also I might be saving the footage, well I am saving the footage to the hard drive, but I might also be uploading this to YouTube. I don't know if I'm planning to do, or if I'm going to do a full playthrough of Gothic 3. I'm really just trying to get footage, so that way I can do a review. Because I have already played this game a couple times, I already know it, I've written a review before. But, it's been a while since I've actually played it, so I'm really just trying to refresh my memory and get footage for a review. So we'll see how far I get with this. I'm just going to hit new game here and we'll jump right into the incredibly long loading screen. So this game came out in 2006 and was incredibly resource intensive at the time and apparently it still chugs along even though I, it's what 13 years? Almost 13 years since this game came out and I have a computer that's However many times more powerful than my computer back in 2006 was. Um, it's maybe eight times more powerful. Maybe even more in terms of just graphical power. Video memory. And then these load screens still take forever. Alright, I have a cursor and birds chirping. And a voice and then a, a flicker of a screen, and now water. So this intro seems to take place basically right after Gothic 2 when the nameless hero and his crew sets off from the Isle of Eardorath, and my goodness, it's getting kind of loud. Everything's kind of crescendoing. So there we've got Gorn and Diego, along with the protagonist. Bunch of uh, orc models, just copy and paste it. They only have like maybe three uh, models for the orcs. And yet they pay, the orc army is like dozens and dozens of them just copy pasted. And of course they all use the exact same weapon model. Mumble mumble sigh. Doing the same running animation.
I think that's supposed to be like a reverse barrier. Like a, it's supposed to keep things out rather than keep things in. Like it was in Gothic 1. And here's our, our, our crew. The Fantastic Four, as I like to call them. Diego, Milton, Gorn, and Lester. And a really cool electric guitar. Oh man. <laughs> Wait. New quest, find Zardus. Our first, uh, our, our first access to gameplay is a tutorial screen. Just right in the middle of the window while fighting happens around me. Alright, so there's a quick slot bar at the lower edge of the screen. By pressing the corresponding number key, you can use an item or draw a weapon. Press 1 now to draw a sword. Okay, I will do so. I have drawn- oh. Well done! In order to attack an opponent, you must move up close until his name appears above him. You can then deal out blows by clicking with the left and right mouse, left and right mouse buttons. Hold down the right mouse button to parry you. And fighting multiple opponents, you can use the movement keys during an attack in order to hit an opponent to your left or right. Attack an orc! Yeah, this is how you start your your epic fantasy game. It's just in the middle of a chaotic mess of combat with like the barest of tutorial that just says, hey, this is how you draw a sword and this is how you attack. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. So, is this guy going to stop ever? There we go. I should point out that I am not using the community patches. I'm playing the normal Steam version of the game, which I think um, which I, th oh god, tutorials everywhere. All items you pick up here in the inventory, there are different items categories, stuck in the upper right. We'll pick on items to use or equip them, make an item available, drag and drop. So I gotta drag from all the way up here down to there. Can I drag this? Nope. Right, but like I was saying, I'm playing the Steam version, which I believe only has the official patches. In other words, none of the community patches. Partly because I'm not necessarily a huge fan of some of the things the community patches do, but also because I want to get more context for what this game was like when it originally came out. You know, oh god, leave me alone. I just got back up. I'll show you. You know, I want to sort of reacquaint myself with the original version and then I'll install the community patch to get sort of a comparison. And it's worth pointing out that the original version actually used to be worse than all of this. I mean, the, the game was a buggy mess when it was released. And like the original release was just so full of itch issues that got kind of fixed with official patches, sort of. And so this is what I'm guessing. This version, I think, has all of the official Piranha Bytes patches. Yep, here we go. Just spam right click, and they can't do anything. Still got it. Still got it. All right, these guys are all just standing here. This is like, oh, here's the hero. We have to start uh, acting. Wow. Right, so just spam right click. They can block, but they'll still take a little bit of damage, and for the most part, they won't be able to get attacked. So, and I've already leveled up. How exciting! Scout. I'm about to get killed if this guy gets a hit on him. Just keep spamming right click. That's all it takes. Yeah. Oh my god, there's 
orcs behind me. Yeah. This is all your own. What have oh, you what? done? The orcs would have let us live. What happened? Now Zardis will send even more of them after us. There's still a fight. You need to go to Reduk. What? The mu combat music is still playing. Now it's playing. your turn. What is happening? Take all. Kruspach. Oh, he's got a world map. That's nice. What is this? Booze? Yeah, because Booze is well known for its endurance enhancing abilities. When in reality, it's. Isn't it actually the opposite? All these dead slaves. Gotta loot everything, because you never know what might come in handy. Did I just pick up a Geico? Oh, it's a wild bear. Alright. I'm trying the left click here. Not so bad, really. I'll show ya! Isn't there supposed to be a point where like they give Stop up right and there. run away? When do I when do I get to that point? Ow, ow, ow! Goodness. So now I'm stuck in the combat in the uh infinite attack loop. Oh, he hit me. Oh my goodness. Get me, Orc Slayer. Wait, oh, that's not Orc Slayer. I hate that you have to drag it so far across the screen. There we go. You can now put your weapon away by pressing the spacebar. Go to your friends to talk to each one of them. Approach them until their name is displayed, then left click the mouse button. Talk to Diego Gorn and Milton. What about Lester? Um. Alright, first of all, I'm trying to put my sword away. The tutorial told me space. But I remapped my keys, so space is jump. And this animation is kind of ridiculous. Maybe it looks better when you're... Oh god, he didn't even jump. It probably looks better if you can, if you're like running and get a side view of it. How do I put my sword away? Oh, what? What? I can toggle the hot bar. That's kind of cool. Wait, why does pressing C put me in like defensive stance? I don't understand. Um. Okay. He's got a lot of money. Krush Agash. So now I gotta just like. I gotta spend 30 minutes looting this entire place. I got an orc crossbow, a bunch of plants. Krush Barak. Woodcutter's axe. This is exciting. Just picking things up and taking them. Wait a minute. Did that, like, textile roll? The stuff on the shelves. Look at that draw distance on that. It's like... Okay. I guess that's acceptable since it's in an interior location and you normally wouldn't see it until you step in. I just hit the quick save button and it takes forever to save. It's not really a quick save, it's more of like a slow save. Potion against diseases and head knock. Head knock arrow will knock over any opponent. Okay. That's exciting. I'm gonna sleep. Recover some HP. I, uh, uh, 
Okay. Money. How much money do I have? 433. Oh, no, I don't want to talk to you. Go away. Uh, let me grab my other mouse. This one's a little more comfortable. 433, so 50 bucks. Teleporter stone. Alright, there's surely a lot more to loot. But for now, I'll talk to the boss man, Hamler. What has Zardus got to do with the orcs? What has Zardus got to do with the orcs? What's wrong with you? Haven't you been here these last few weeks? Zardus is the leader of the orcs. He betrayed us. What else do you know about Zardus? He destroyed the rune magic, that filthy swine. Deprived of their magic, paladins and fire mages never stood a chance against the hordes of orcs. What's in Reddick? What's in Reddick? Did he already the tell Rebel me that? Camp. It's in the middle of the forest, where the wolves are. Oh. I can handle wolves. Yeah. Yes, but those beasts are awfully aggressive, and you won't be able to find it by yourself. I think your buddy Gorn knows where it is. You should go talk to him. What should I tell the rebels? Tell their leaders to send us fighters. We don't stand a chance by ourselves. Now we're also in it up to our necks. A uh, new quest. Talk to the leader of the rebels in Reddick. And for that I'm supposed to talk to Gorn, but I'm going to tweak the audio settings because even though I got the music at 34%, Compared to 100% voice volume, it's still, like, really overpowering. And, you know, it sounds good, but it's just, it's so loud. I can't help it. I don't like orcs. What's going on with Lester? He was going to get reinforcements. What We're the... Just talking. Yep, he's. Oh, See dude. you later. Keep your. We were just talking. Why can't I? We were just talking. See you later. This was exciting. Like, this guy's my good friend from two games, and he tells keep me your... See, keep... one talking. line about Lester. <laughs> Another fine mess we've got ourselves into. What happened here? What happened here? Quite obviously, the orcs have won their war against King Robar. And now the orcs are sweeping through the land, enslaving the humans. But most of all, I would like to know what happened to Lester. We'll talk later. Take care. Fur. We'll talk later. Take fur. We'll take fur. We'll take right. care. Looks like I gotta find Lester. Also, I'm noting that all the voice actors seem to be different. Maybe Gorn. Just like old times, huh? Nope, the he's orcs different too. All that strong. There must be other tougher ones. What about Lester? Wasn't he going to get some reinforcements? <laughs> Very good. Next you should talk to your old buddy Lester. Period. Walk out of the village and follow the path to the left that leads to the coast. There you can find Lester who will give you more information. Talk to Lester on the beach. So, this is already like a really strong divergence from sort of the core design philosophy of Gothic 1 and 2. Because Gothic 1 and 2... They either would have said, Hey, where did Lester go? I saw him leave out the... S what direction is this? The Northwest Gate? And head for the coast. And then it would have just been all up to us, me, the player, to figure out where he went and find him ourselves. Or a character would have given me that instruction that the tutorial window gave, but... Now there's a big giant interface window in the middle of the screen saying, 
hey, go follow these exact directions and do this. And that is just... Wait a minute. And that is, like, that really takes you out of the world. Uh, mouse wheel apparently does not work in this window. Toggle display is control and F1. I need to unbind control. No. There we go. Okay. So now I can do this. Haha. -ha. Alright, so I'm supposed to go find Lester, but of course I gotta I gotta loot everything. Oh. Didn't even realize I clicked on him. Smith hammer. Can't interact with the Oh I remember these. I think the water barrels heal you and I have uh, strong memories of spending minutes at a time playing this game when it first came out and just, you know, chugging water to heal. Oh man. I think it's like maybe a little ridiculous that you're able to loot all of this stuff like right at the start of the game. What do we got here? A blueprint for a broadsword. Um, hunting bow does 45 damage. Put that on the third slot. It's a little, er, yeah, a little better than what I just looted. These things all need large weapons skills. I can use a woodcutter's axe, but it is somehow the same as the Orc Slayer. Except the Orc Slayer gives... Oh, hello. All attributes and talents of the hero are shown here. Whenever the hero goes up a level, he will receive learning points that can be used with trainers. Any talents already mastered are shown in color. For more information about the various talents, move your mouse pointer over talent. So the Orc Slayer does additional close combat damage to Orcs. Why not? And I'm level 2 and have 20 learning points. Zero armor. I have a basic smith skill. And I have a basic alchemy skill. And basic lock picking. And basic hunting. I've got basic everything except... None of this. Okay. Uh, get me out of that. Oh, nope. Did not. Nope! Don't sit on the stool. Nope, don't sit on the stool. I just want to loot the things on the table. I don't even know what I just picked up. Nope, don't sit in the bed. There we go. Fire arrow! Seems to add 10 damage. Alright, well, I could just... I Like, I'm compelled to loot everything in these games, because... That's how you get money and things, but, like, I'm just kind of bored doing that. I'm sure it's not very fun to watch, so I'm gonna go... Look for Lester. And even though I have a ultra-powerful modern PC, the draw distance is still really low. Like, look at, you can see a very fine line where 
the game switches in and out of low detail mode on the horizon. And I'm sure there is a way that I can tweak some settings. But everything I can find online is like, well, you need to have the community patch to, to make these tweaks work. And since I'm not using the community patch to get, you know, greater point of reference to remind myself what the game was originally like and what Piranha Bytes originally, oh god, intended or rather what they had us end up with. Oh, jeez. Everything's got a tutorial. Hold down the left mouse, the left mouse button in order to draw the bow. Why did I go this way? But okay, whatever. Oh hell, scavengers are already coming for me. I missed. God. Oh man. That was brutal. I wish. I. Maybe there is, but I, I wish and hope that there's a button I can press to take all instead of always having to drag the mouse across the screen. Yo, there's a King Sorrel just sitting out here of all places. Alright. So generally speaking, I'm getting about 60 frames per second on this. But then it I just get these like crazy stuttering spikes where the game just sh shuts down and slows to a crawl as it kind of loads the next area. Alright, see, so look at this draw distance. It's like... I've got everything on max settings and all these barrels and tree stumps and crates and planks of wood. Okay, the planks of wood stay there, but all of this stuff. The shadows... They fade in at such a close range that like really breaks some of the immersion almost. With what? With what? With what? With 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 what? Can't take the wolf pelts. All right, here's Lester. Bad news. There will be no reinforcements. So I noticed. What happened? Go look for the ship. You're not gonna find it. What? Pirates. It was all over in a moment. Are you kidding me? Oops. And what about our equipment? What do you think? We'll have to get some new stuff. Talk to Diego. He knows a lot about acquiring things. Great. Now return to Diego and give him Lester's message, and then let the adventure begin. Report to Di- Ah, oh. oh, man. That really irritates me. If I haven't- uh, said this before or made this clear I don't really like this game very much and now I'm like I got stuck on a barrel I've played it twice um, I played like once immediately after it came out when the game was so broken that it was almost unplayable and then I tr did it again a few years later with Okay, I use a lockpick. With uh, the community patch. And the game is just... The Gothic 3 is just such a strong departure from Gothic 1 and 2 that... It almost doesn't even feel like Gothic to me. The f phrase I used in my written review from like a year or two ago was something along the lines of... Well, let me set it up. It was like... Morrowind came out around the time that Gothic 1 and 2 came out. And so it's almost like Piranha Byte saw that and said, Oh, hey, that game's really popular. Let's try to make our world bigger and more epic and all of this stuff and then like with the development of Oblivion oh hello that is so many wolves they are also the quietest wolves ever I didn't hear them until I was already running away from them 
Come on, you can make it. There we go. That it was like, you know, Oblivion was coming out and it was this big, huge game, and they say, let's, let's do that and make the game bigger. More epic, more quests, bigger world. More things to do. And it's like they really just overstretched... You know, and bit off more than they could chew, trying to do too much and make too big of a game. And there's all these other random nonsensical changes that kind of, they violate the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mantra, because there's so many things that they just changed. And you go, why? Like, they were fine in the first two games, why are they suddenly different now? And some of them, it's like, not a big deal, you can go, eh, whatever. But then other ones, it's, it's, like, almost a deal breaker. And I think the phrase that I used to describe Gothic 3 in my written review from a year or two ago was that it was like... What? I don't know, it's, something's attacking me. But it was like, the uh, Gothic 3 was made by a team that had only a vague idea of what Gothic 1 and 2 were supposed to be. Like, a completely different team who basically never played Gothic 1 or 2 and was being told by someone else, like, hey, this is kind of what the games are like, this is how they worked, and do that but make the game bigger and more epic and so like the gothic elements are kind of there but they're implemented in a way that just really doesn't tie in with how they were originally in the first two games they don't mesh well and it's just kind of underwhelming and disappointing in a lot of ways Yo, this wild boar turned red on me. Yo, draw- knock a, an arrow. Oh god, oh god. Run away. Spam right click! There we go. Got my wild meat. And I vividly remember, like, I was- super hyped for this game because Gothic 1 and 2 are and were my favorite games of all time. They were literally like perception altering experiences because after playing Gothic 1 and 2 I became a lot harder to appreciate other types of games and so I was super hyped and excited for Gothic 3. And then it came out and it was kind of broken and glitchy and was just so different from Gothic 1 and 2 that it was, it was just thoroughly disappointing and underwhelming. I... This game is huge, of course. Oh, God. All smithing blueprints, recipes, alchemical formulas, letters and maps are stored here. To use blueprints, you must find an anvil for recipes, a campfire, or so. Alchemist bench for yada yada. Letters maps can be read by moving yada yada for this left click on the letter icon. Alright, so I'm gonna look at my world map. So this map is huge, and um, I'm near Ardea, which I guess is the starting town, and you know, let's say hypothetically, I don't, I'm just gonna guesstimate, but I'm gonna say like Gothic 1's map is probably like this big. Maybe, and then Gothic 2 is like maybe this. And so then Gothic 3, they add all this other stuff, and if you look at Varan, it's like it's just this huge desert that is just majority of, majority of the land space is just sand, it's nothing. And so this game is just really big and it really bloated, I guess is the term. Like, it, they just tried to, they stretched it too thin and tried to fill it with too much stuff. And it's, the world is 
too big and it takes too long to play and it's just so time consuming that I don't know that I want to play a full playthrough of Gothic 3. Hence why I, I'm i really only intending to play enough to get footage to write a review, or rather to do a video review, mostly based on my written review, but I don't know, on the chance that I you know get enthralled by the game and decide, hey, I'll keep playing, maybe I'll keep going, but... I just really have no desire to spend as much time as it takes to finish this game because it is so long. I mean, even Gothic 2, a game that I love, oh goodness, I spent, I don't know how many hours in that, in that playthrough, like 80 maybe? Maybe 80 hours playing Gothic 2? And even in that game, I was getting kind of tired of playing it, and this game is probably about the same or longer but you know that that time drags on a lot more when you're not having as much fun and so now I'll murder turtles and not loot any turtle meat and so yeah we have Huge, sprawling beach. I and mean, look at how big it is and how tiny I am. And it's just like, why Why is this beach so big? Oh, it's a lurker. Come at me, bro. I'm gonna shoot you in the face. Basically, all the monsters got completely reworked, too. Oh, man. Stop using the arrows. This thing is going to kill me. Oh, God. He stops. Ah! Run! 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 Got him. Can't uh, take anything off of him. Do I have any food that I can eat? This doesn't really heal much. Roast meat bug, I'm eating it. Meat bug stew, a la snaff. Now, one nice thing that they did is that these healing items, they heal uh, percentages of health as opposed to a fixed amount. And that's a good change over Gothic 1 and 2 because Gothic 1 and 2 had fixed healing values which effectively rendered a lot of plants and food items worthless as you leveled up because like level 1 um, fried meat healing 10 or 15 health or whatever is a lot when you only have 50 health but then 30 hours later when you have like 600 health 10 extra healing is like you, you have to eat a lot of meat to heal up 600 health and so it's really nice that they made it percentage based that way it'll still heal only a small sliver but at least this way it won't become increasingly worthless or useless as you level up oh there's a chest here I was trying to open the or pick up the healing route Oh, nope, why? Nope, nope, undo. There's that swelling, like, crescendoing fanfare as I walk around an empty beach. All 
Alright, I'm kind of... Kind of done exploring this beach. There's still a lot of beach to explore, but I'm just going to head back to town and talk to, um... Diego. So I can advance the main quest of talking to my buddies and being told what to do through tutorial windows. Luster's still here. Nope. And I can't... Oh, I can use the campfire. I was wondering... Oh, here's another nice change, is you can cook multiple pieces of meat or food items with one um, use of the thing, as opposed to having to do it one at a time by clicking each time. But I wasn't sure that I could use this, because I didn't get the, um, like, the interface text. You know, like, a tree trunk. Bench. Campfire? Why does it show up for those ones, but not the campfire? That's inconsistent and weird. Oh, man. I just slowly trod up these steps. This, uh, this, this trail... This path. Oh, what? There's like rebels here. What? I. What? 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 Where'd everybody go? Where'd my friends go? What happened? Why are there rebels here? I feel like the game skipped a step. I was supposed to talk to talk to Diego, and then I and I remember I was supposed to talk to Gorn, and Gorn was supposed to escort me to Redick. And I didn't think these rebels were supposed to get here until I told them, Hey, Ardea has been attacked. What the heck is going on? Is that just because I wandered too far away from town? Even still, like, I didn't think these guys should have showed up until I brought news to Redick that the that the town had been liberated. Where are my friends? The menu shows the hero's missions and the reputation he's gained through the successful missions with the various factions and individual cities. Find Zardus, whatever. Talk to the leader of... Okay, whatever. This is perplexing. We owe you a He doesn't talk to me. Does Blacksmith Man do anything? Show me your goods. Show me your goods. Here you can buy goods, sell them, or barter. Simply drag the items you want to buy from the vendor's inventory to the field in the lower left. Drag any items you want to sell or trade to the field in the lower right. If the goods are of equal value, a trade is made. If the value is not equal, yada yada, gold balance. Okay, what's he got? The two-hander? Don't care. Rapier, slightly better. But it requires hunting skill. That's kind of cool, actually. Why, why, why does an orc slayer do as much damage as a completely normal sword? I might go with the hunting skill stuff. Because uh, one of the another one of the few improvements that Gothic 3 made over the previous games is like that. the fact that it lets you manually aim 
uh, bows and spells and things as opposed to Just stop screwing around. Gothic 1 and 2 where it's really kind of a lame, boring auto lock target thing where you would you couldn't aim it manually, you just locked onto the target and then just you know press the shoot button. And so for that reason I never really liked playing ranged characters in the first two games. Because the actual gameplay for those was kind of boring and literally straightforward. Whereas the melee combat, you know, was more in-depth. In you had to time your attacks and you had different types of attacks. You had to read the enemy attack patterns to be able to, to move out of the way or block attacks correctly and find correct windows to attack and so on, as opposed to just pointing and clicking and then running away and kiting them, you know? In the beginning, the nomads roamed the land, and the Eternal Wanderer led the way. My ancient knowledge is increased by five. I don't know what that means. Ancient knowledge, I guess, is a requirement to... learn... Mage spells. Okay. That's good to know. Let's check on the stream here. Alright. Um, but I think maybe both times that I played this game I kind of went a little magic heavy. So I think it probably like really is the best way to play this game. Because if I'm not mistaken, you don't really get a lot of different skills. It's like Gothic 1 and 2, as you leveled up your fighting skill, you got new combos and things. And so it was a dynamic system that changed and improved and got better as you leveled up but in this game I don't think that's the Some case anymore so I think it's pretty much like if you are a melee fighter it's gonna be the same for the rest of the game grant me life force, life force. I can increase why does the statue need 125 gold Um, but it, like, if you decide to be a melee fighter, I think the combat might be pretty much the same from beginning to end. Maybe you get like an extra attack somewhere here and there. I don't know. But at least with magic you can get a bunch of new spells and do different things like that, so... I want to say that the... The magic system is maybe the better way to play since it show me your goods would give you a little bit more variety. Oh god, I right clicked. I don't, no thanks. It's all these rebels here. Stool. Gonna climb the lighthouse, and I'm gonna take everything inside of it. Kind of boring. Whoa! Let's see how the guy kind of flailed his arms. Whoa! Whoa! Oh. Hey, Alright, I'm just gonna head over to Reddick then. Since that's kind of my main quest. 
I don't know if that guy told me where it was. I mean, I know where it is because I've played before. Oh, God. As soon as the hero has learned to spell, the corresponding icon will appear in color in the book. These icons can be dragged and dropped, yada yada. If he did tell me where they are, it's not recorded in this chat log. And so, apparently, if I... I don't, I don't even know, like, I somehow, somehow the game skipped forward. I was supposed to be able to return to town and talk to my three friends, my four friends, really. Because Lester, I think, would have somehow beaten me back, and then they all would have been there. And then I would have been able to say, hey, I'm going to Reddick to help the rebels. What are you doing? And then each one of them would say something about sort of where they're planning to go, what they're hoping to do. Like, uh, Milton, I'm sure, says, like, I'm gonna go here to to check out this ancient mystical thing, or, like, to check in with the mages. Whoops. You know, and then Diego's like, yo, I wanna go to this city where I can rob people, sort of thing. I think Lester goes to the desert for some reason. But, like, Gorn is supposed to say, hey, I'm gonna join up with the rebels nearby. And then you're supposed to be able to tag along with him, but somehow... Somehow the game skipped that, and... Now I'm just going there myself, and if the game had to... If I had not played this game before, and the game had skipped like that... I would have no idea where to go or what to do, because ain't nobody gave me any kind of directions. And in these sorts of games, like the open world games or whatever, the, the freedom to go wherever you want and do whatever you want is supposed to be the main appeal, but I usually like it when open world games give you a little bit more of a directed start to get you into the game and to give you kind of a reason to care about exploring the world and doing things. Because when they just drop you in the middle of a world and say, go, I'm s it doesn't really entice me because it kind of just feels like aimlessly wandering around. You know, you're like you're just looking for content, looking for things to do, trying to find interesting things, and without the proper context for why you should care about all this or where this sort of stuff would be building or leading up to, it can feel really pointless. And so I like how Gothic. 2, for instance, Gothic 2 does a really good job of, like, they give you the freedom to go wherever you want. Like, you can, if you really want, you can not go to the first town in Karenis and just go around it and go exploring and do whatever. Oh god, aggressive wild boar. But... They do have that path that sort of funnels you towards towards going to town, and you get multiple characters along the way who kind of stress the idea of getting to town, and they give you a quest to get into town, and, you know, the buildup of getting into town. City's under lockdown, you need to find a way in. And here's several different ways to get in. Now, make a decision, figure out what works best for you, and even try exploring some alternate options. You know, and that sort of thing gives you, or at least gives me, um, enough of a direction to start the game that I can get into it a little bit easier because it presents me with a clear problem an obstacle that I need to overcome. And that, I find, is a lot more engaging than just sort of being dropped in the middle of a world and being told, 
All right, now go have fun, basically. Right click, or oh. Boars. So in the original version of this game, before I think the official patch, the like I've said before, the game was basically broken. And these boars were like the worst offenders because they had like no stamina bar and their attack animations are just so fast that they would chain stun you to death. And it looks like, oh, what? Close successful, kill his reputation, red experience, whole bunch of XP. So I just completed a quest. But it was like, if you got hit by one attack from one of these boars, you were basically dead, because you could not do anything. They would just stun lock you to death. I'm gonna shoot this wolf. He disappeared. Kinda sounds like he's aggroed on something. What 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 is he? Oh, there's a a scavenger in the rock. But see like this is what I mean why Why it feels like somebody else other than Piranha Bytes made this game because the scavengers look like scaly, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but they looked completely different in Gothic 1 and 2, and now they look all weird and different in this game, and that's especially true of the orcs. Because the orcs in Gothic 1 and 2 were kind of like a primitive tribal society that m spoke like a simple guttural language. Mucha chunga! Mucha chunga! You know, stuff like that. They wore primitive clothing like loincloths and sort of like ancient Roman gladiator type uh, armor. They literally lived in teepees, wigwams, whatever. And now in Gothic 3, they like they all wear all these clothes. This guy over here is wearing like a like a trench coat, a leather trench coat. They talk, they all talk English. They they do human things like sit at campfire. Well, I guess they did kind of maybe in Gothic 1. But, like, they sit in chairs, and they have, like, advanced military tactics. And, like, they're not even aggroing me. In Gothic 1 and 2, these orcs would have tried to kill me on sight because orcs bad, and they are the enemies of the game. And now they're just like, hey, whatever, man. That's even kind of weird, because, like, they're supposed to be... The whole point of Gothic 3 is that the orcs are winning the war against the humans in the mainland of Martana, and they're literally enslaving the human race. And there's a random human running around, and they don't care. It's not like we're at war with each other or anything. Oh, whatever. Yourself, you leave me alone. Remind me of the war. You'll have to move along. Leave me alone. Watch out. The fire is hot, Mora. This guy, wait a minute. These orcs make yourself useful, Mora. Beat it. Watch out. Make yourself useful, Mora. Beat it. These voice actors for the orcs remind me a lot of um. Like the Dark Elves in Morrowind. That's bizarre. I wonder if it's if they possibly... 
hired the, the same voice actor or if that was like a sort of subconscious design decision. Wandering through wooded areas, picking up plants is really exciting gameplay. And now in a game like Gothic 1 and 2, oh, I would be totally on board with this. Because those worlds were smaller. And so generally speaking, there was less ground to cover and less plants, fewer plants to pick up. But in a game like, oh, and I guess I should also say that because those games were smaller and more focused, there was more of a reason to want to pick up plants and things because there were fewer of them, and if you were using them, that meant that you would run out of them, and so on and so on. Um, but in this, oh, goodness. But in this game, with everything being just so big and spread out, you know, if you spent like a if you spent a minute running around a forest in Gothic One and picked up a few plants, that same gameplay concept would just be like doubled or tripled in length in this game. And so all the time you spend just picking up plants and looking around for random things on the ground to pick up adds up a lot over time and it can just get to be really tedious and kind of disappointing and frustrating when you realize that like everything that you've done is for the last 30 minutes most of what you most of what you spent your time doing is just really tedious mundane boring stuff like picking up plants or rummaging through buildings and it's kind of disappointing Okay, so this is Reddick, the nearby rebel camp. We got a couple of named characters, so I will talk to these fine gentlemen. Let's see what I can do. Do I just have the one quick save file? I should probably make a hard save. Let me save over that. That was from when I was testing um, gameplay settings and getting the balance right. You don't look like a woodcutter. No, I, I don't. I think your place is with the warriors down in the cave. How's it going? Uh, not so good. We were chased away from our post by aggressive wild boars. I already told the warriors, but they only think about fighting the orcs. If those beasts don't disappear soon, we won't be able to keep working. The aggressive wild boars are dead. You can go back to work. <laughs> Finally, one of you who worries about our problems. Thanks, warrior. Here is my gold. All right, I did a thing. Be very careful when roaming through the woods here. Why is Orc your head so small? Everywhere in this region. Even his neck just kind of like it bulges out near the base of his shoulders. Man, that guy I looks I come weird. from Ardea. We drove the orcs from the village. Talk to Javier. He already knows about it. One of our scouts saw everything. Javier is down below, in the cavern. I, I don't think it's the body model. I think it's the texture meshes. Tell me more about the this armor. place. This is the largest rebel camp on the coast. We call it Reddick. Many royalists who haven't yet been enslaved by the orcs are hiding here. I really hope for your sake that you aren't a spy for the orcs. Or we'll make short work of you. I see. So another thing with Gothic 3 is that it allows you to uh, choose to side with the orcs. So instead of joining uh, one of three different camps, 
you sort of align yourself with three different factions in this game, but you never really officially join them. You just do actions throughout the world and gain reputation, which kind of unlocks different sorts of benefits as the game goes on. And I'm not really a fan of siding with the orcs. That just seems kind of like not uh, canon. It doesn't seem thematically appropriate or narratively appropriate for the story as it has been so far throughout the first two games. The orcs don't know about this rebel camp. If the orcs knew we were hiding out here, they would have certainly killed us by now. Tell me more about the rebels. We are the only free humans in Mertana who are still fighting the orcs. Orc patrols are our biggest problem here on the coast. Last night, they came dangerously close. Where are the orc patrols now? One orc patrol is constantly on the move. Right now, they are between us and Ardea. Another has parked itself on a farm to the east, between here and Cape Dunn. If we don't take care of them now, they will stumble upon Reddick sooner or later. What about the humans working for the orcs? Most of them are slaves, but there are some human orc mercenaries as well. Within certain limits, they are allowed to move freely among the orcs. I can only hope you're not going to mingle with them. Why should I avoid the orc mercenaries? People who team up with the enemy are the enemy. The path of the orc mercenary is the easy way, with no freedom, and against Enos, our god. Do, can I do both of these patrols? I will go visit the orc patrol on the farm. Be careful. If they take you for a rebel, they will chop you to pieces. I'll take care of the roaming orc patrol. Do that. But be careful so they don't find our camp here. Show me your goods. Okay, so... 150,000 gold to buy paladin armor. Boy, that's exciting. Farmer's clothes give me five defense. That's exciting. Whoop, oh god. What game have I been playing recently where right click is to close a window? Because I am like always compelled to right click to close windows in this game. Which apparently is the same as select this item and put it in the trade window. We have a locked chest with a couple of spells in it. Transfer disease. Toad wart. Aha! I've remembered that while sneaking, you do not have to go through that bend over and pick up the item animation. You don't have to do this animation. You can just boop, 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 and it goes right into your inventory. Man, that saves a lot of time. Hey, you. What are you doing sneaking around? I'm trying to speed up the process of picking mushrooms. Is this... This rock is just missing a texture. It's kind of almost there, where this one mushroom is growing out in the center of the screen, but n n not really. This one's doing it too. Why am I missing random rock textures? Also, why is there no music? What is, what is happening? Old chest. So I think this is the first of the scripted 
linear loot progression system in the game, which is another reason I don't really like Gothic 3. Get your hands off of that. Okay, so they don't like that. Oh, it's not too bad. Really? It says the end. It doesn't even say game over or you died, it's the end. That's funny. I apparently have to go to a load screen. Manually. The intro music, like the main menu music for this game, is pretty cool. But I don't like that sort of ominous before it actually kicks in. I don't know why. That's like. In my, uh, my got my, the video I made on the, uh, importance of Gothic 1 and 2's soundtrack, I said something like, along the lines of how the Gothic 3 soundtrack has little things that stick out and kind of pull your attention away, and they get, they stick out so much in the sound, even within the soundtrack, let alone how it blends with the rest of the sound effects and, like, the atmosphere and ambience of the game itself. But little motifs and things like that that stick out and they kind of, they get repetitive when you notice them. It's not really that fun musically and it's, eh. The fact that it's literally the first part of music in the game is kind of lame. What? Oh, yes. I, uh, I am a bit jumpy. I'm sorry. What can I do for you? Who are you? My name is Sebastian. I am the alchemist here in Red Oak. I am a voice actor attempting to sound old and wise by putting on a slow and deliberately raspy voice. You wear the clothes of a fire mage. Before the war, I was a high mage of the fire. And then yet I only look like I'm 41 years magic. old. And soon after that, the war but was over. But sound like I'm Robin 85. All I have left of my rank. Why did you fire mages lose your magic? I have spent many sleepless nights trying to answer that question. All I know is that we could no longer hold off the orcs without our rune magic. Many fire mages were killed. And those that survived the debacle fled to the woods. What will you do now? I will stay here in Redduck and study the ancient writings of our ancestors. Legend has it that the ancient ones possessed their own kind of magic. It was completely independent of aids such as the runes from which we draw our magic. He said draw, but the subtitle said drew. Tell me more about the magic of the ancient ones. All that is certain is that the Ancient Ones existed and that their artifacts can be found everywhere in the ruins. Even today, the only way to learn more about their magic is to unravel the mystery of those ruins. All the surviving Fire Mages are researching the ancient knowledge. Tell me something about alchemy. It is the only way of healing and strengthening yourself. Without magic, I am no expert, but my abilities are enough to supply Red Ark with what is absolutely necessary. Finally, some background ambience has kicked in. It's like cave music or cave sounds. It's not quite like. It's not really musical, but like, man, the game needed something here. I couldn't just sit here in silence. Tell me more about the artifacts of the ancient ones. The orcs and are obsessed gone. with searching for these valuable relics. Every dealer Why? in the land knows that, 
and we'll offer you a correspondingly Keep that ambience high price. going. Many artifacts you need that for are the of atmosphere. great value to us mages as well, such as the fire chalices, for example. What is so special about the fire chalices? The fire chalices are ancient and were thought to have been lost for many years. It is said that they possess powerful magical capabilities. But I am no expert. If you should find a fire chalice, take it to my brethren in Nordmar. They will be able to tell you more about it than I can. New quest. Find all the fire chalices. Teach me what you know about alchemy. I would gladly do that. But unfortunately, I don't have enough ingredients to teach you. If you can get me ten healing plants, I will share my knowledge with you. Well, boy, it's a good thing I've I'll get gone you some healing plants. around These and plants rounded up grow some almost healing everywhere. plants. I don't think you will have a problem finding them. Why don't you go get them then? If, the, if they grow everywhere and they're so easy to find, why do I have to go get them for you? Doesn't seem like you've got anything better to do. Here are your ten healing plants. Wonderful. Now, I can share my knowledge with you. Uh, and see, this is another thing. Like Gothic 1 and 2, they had really good quest design, where even if they were telling you to just, you know, oh, fetch me these items, like, there was a good reason for why you would want to do that. In this case, the best reason for the for why you as a player would be motivated to get this guy plants is because he's a trainer and will teach you how to brew potions or whatever. But the actual quest itself is like, why? Why do you need these plants? Why do I have to do it? I just met you, I don't know you, so on and so on. And that's just like a really boring MMO style uh, filler quest where they just crammed as much content like that as they could into the game to fill out space. And that's part of the reason why this game is weaker than Gothic 1 and 2 is because the quests are just so uninspired and they're tedious and boring and shallow and repetitive. Alright, but... Teach me something about Maybe alchemy. I can look at some uh, trainer skills here. Can't really afford much of this. Teach me something about ancient magic. I want to learn faster. I, th I assume that means that's the skill where I get an extra learning point every level up. Can't really afford any of this. Show me your goods. Show me your goods. I don't know what the correct tone of voice, like what adjective I would use to describe that tone that he, he uses, but it's definitely striking. Marlo. Welcome, stranger. What can I do for you? Do you need food, clothes, or maybe a hefty swig from the bottle? Marlo will sell you everything you need here on the coast. Can I sell you a mustache that doesn't clip through your face when you talk? Who are you? I am Marlo. I am the best merchant on the coast from Ardea all the way to Cape Dun. What interests me most are valuable items. Items such as silver, gold, and jewels. I take everything. What do you do with the junk? I know ways to convert the stuff into shiny coins, and we need them. So you're supporting a good cause when you bring me the stuff. Where do you get your goods? We have people in the cities who take care of our supplies. You just ask Once you for the have brought us a option. few valuables, they will let you know who they are. Why would you give me the option to ask either of those if the guy's just going to automatically do the other one, too? Where can I find trade goods here on the coast? I can give you some information, but not for free. What can I find in Cape Dunn? That fat alchemist in Cape Dunn has a chest where he stores his stuff. The orcs pay him with the booty from their campaign. There ought to be some good stuff to be had there. 
Where can I find trade goods here on the coast? I can give you some information, but not for free. What is in the wilderness of the coastal region? The area here is primarily controlled by bandits. The boss of the gang is called Ortega. He collects his booty in a cave somewhere in the north. If there is any loot to be had on the coast, then that's the place. Show me your goods. Show me your goods. Nope. Is he um, going to be defensive of his property here? I just quick saved and it always just feels like the game freezes. Because it literally, literally does. And the engine just stops altogether. There's nothing new here. Aha! A woman! I just can't go on. You'd better go now. You'd better go now. I don't want any trouble. I don't want any trouble. I just can't go on. I'm sure you have something else to do. Hey! Okay, hands they off. don't like that. Let me hit that that slow load button. Uh You know, considering I'm playing on a solid state drive with 8 gigs of memory, you'd think that this would be able to load all this stuff, like, pretty fast for a 13-year-old game. Ah, oh, man, I don't even want to think of how bad these loading screens were at the time. I know they were ridiculous. Like, I'm talking probably 30 to 60 seconds every single time. I don't I don't know how long this one was, but this is probably like 20 seconds maybe. Wait, did I already loot this guy's thing that he didn't see me loot? Yes, I saved before looting his chest. The magic root is over here, but the interface appears way behind me. That's really weird. Also, why is there no music or ambient sound effects? Come on now. There's got to be something playing here. It can't just be nothing. There we go. It's like it randomly kicks in whenever I interact with someone or something. Copper. Javier, or as they called him, Javier? What did they. Is that what they called him? I want to see if I can pick this stuff up without getting murdered. They don't seem to mind. It's 
this is maybe another nice thing about Gothic 3 is that they have a couple more auxiliary skills attached to certain things. Like, I really like this idea of being able to get a couple of extra little skills in addition to your basic uh, smithing abilities. More options like that are helpful. And they're just, you know, f they're, f they're fun for role-playing, character building, stuff like that. So that's good. What else is there? We've got... Double bow damage to game animals and to big game animals, orc hunter. They kind of lumped all these into the hunter things. Can sneak up on wild animals. Regeneration. You can deflect ma enemy spells. Man, that's cool. You can knock it down with the club. I don't know how useful that is, but again, that's that's kind of cool. Make excuses. If the hero is suspected of a crime, he can attempt to talk his way out of it. This is the best skill. Ha! Just make excuses. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, what do we got in here? Anything interesting? So far, nothing that I can use. I'm gonna pick things up. I don't know what they are. Okay. I'm gonna assume I'm targeting something. Yep, okay. It's really, really weird how the interface text uh, to tell you what you're focused on sometimes is so far off screen that you can't even see it. Stop! What? Some valuable things have oh. gone missing here. Do you know anything about that? No. We no. are watching you. Ah, a new man! Well, I did not expect that and completely <laughs> forgot that that kind of thing happened. Hmm, okay. What are you doing here? What are you doing I'm here? taking care of our forces in Redduck. We keep training and trying to prepare as best we can for a battle with the orcs. The closed off area over there is our training arena. Show me the fight. Show me how to fight. All right. I'll show you how to handle weapons if you make yourself useful for our camp. Uh, what do you want me to do? What should I do for you? Our smithy has been shut down for days, but the battles with the orcs haven't decreased. If you bring us five bundles of weapons, that would help our cause <sighs> tremendously. Five bundles of weapons. Where can I find bundles of weapons? Where there are orcs? There are weapons. Mostly, they can't do anything with human weapons, so they collect those, pack them in bundles, and store them somewhere. I see. Why do they take the time to pack them into bundles if they can't use them? Surely they have a use for them other than as normal weapons. Like, are they planning to smelt them down and reuse the metal? Wow, well, whatever. You fight against each other in your arena? That's the best training there is. Unfortunately, the orcs agree completely. They have an arena of their own in almost every city. Why is that they unfortunate? They value a fighter who wins arena battles very highly. Why is that unfortunate? That has no relation to anything that happens in here, or you guys. How exactly does the arena work? You challenge someone to fight, and meet him in the arena. As soon as you enter the arena, it starts. Is that all? Not quite. There are two rules. 
First, anyone who leaves the arena in the middle of a fight loses. Second, when one of the fighters is on the ground and doesn't get back up, that the fight fighter is, is over. dead. If you kick someone who's down or kill your opponent, you oh. will be called to account by everyone. I see. Two men enter. Both men leave. I guess I can fight copper. Probably. Why has copper got to look exactly like everyone else? It's even got the same haircut as this other guy. Do they have the same face? No, they at least have different faces. Actually, they have the same haircut. No, maybe not. It's slightly different. I was mistaken. I'm sorry, Copper. Hey, you look like you could take a beating or two. What about a little fight in the arena? You want to go up against you me? You want to go up against me? <laughs> well, not really. You're among friends here. We humans must stick together against the orcs. I need some training. You look like you might be an equal opponent. Meet me in, Meet the, me arena. in the arena. Oh. All right. So let's see what you've got. I said that a lot like how he was saying it. All right, let's let's improve our abilities by beating the crap out of each other. <sighs> Let's get stronger by inflicting grave wounds upon each other. Yay, right click. I'm gonna steal all your crap. He also has an Orc Slayer. Why does he have two different stacks of coins? Why are they not in one? Why is everything so bizarre? Why is his Orc Slayer worn? Does my Orc Slayer become worn? Uh, next time, it's my turn. You won the fight. Good job. You've got what it takes. If you need a comrade in arms to fight by your side, I'm your man. Nah. Don't need none of that. All right, Javier, Javier, let's have a little chit chat. You're new here, aren't you? Many refugees have Wait. joined us in Reddick lately. Is that the same voice Your actor as Norris, who's standing right next to him? Where's Norris? Would you teach me how to fight? You aren't ready for that. Hard to tell. Are you in charge here? I'm the most experienced man here when it comes to fighting orcs. I guess that would make me something like a leader of this rebel camp. You're wearing a paladin's armor. I used to be a paladin before the orcs won the war for themselves. I fought for the king in the last battle for Vanguard, the capital. Now I'm just a refugee, just like everybody else here. Tell me more about the war. Tell me more about the war. There isn't much to say about that, my friend. Once we paladins lost our magic and ran out of magic ore, we didn't stand a chance. We ended up being easy prey for the orcs. That was it. That was kind of boring. And uninsightful. How can I support you? There are many possibilities for furthering our cause. Just walk around here and ask the people in the camp. We need to prepare for the revolution in Cape Dunn. I need weapons. So do we. Unfortunately, there is one small problem with that. Our last smith died in combat. Since then, our smithy has been abandoned. If you know somebody who could take his place, send him to us. Radek needs a smith. 
What do you know about Zardis? No more than everyone else does. He's in cahoots with the orcs, or so they say. If you want to find out more, try their shamans. The only problem is getting them to talk to a human in the first place. We drove the orcs out of Ardea. So we owe this to you? What? Oh. Well done! Our people will take care of things from now on. I have other tasks for you if you want to help us. Explain this revolution thing to me. The cities of Mertana are ruled by orcs. But Mertana. some of us rebels are lying low within the cities. When the time comes, the rebels will mobilize both slaves and free humans for the revolution. You must find these undercover rebels and follow their orders if you want to support us. Who is this undercover rebel in Cape Dunn? He's moving among the slaves in Cape Dunn so we won't be recognized. I hope they haven't found him out yet. I will not tell you who it is. I don't know you well enough for that. But if you can gain his trust, tell him that Javier sent you to support him. Okay. So he needs... He needs a uh, smith. Uh... I don't remember who that is or where that person would be. Might be somebody in Ardea or in Cape Dunn. I need to remember to sneak before I pick up anything in this game. Oh, wait, what? We got goblins? We got goblins. Did I hit him for any damage? Yes, I did. I was just somehow targeting the other one. Got him. Oh, man. That hit really hard. Goodness gracious. Right click spam. That's all it takes. I should point out at this point that the combat system in this game is kind of rubbish. And, you know, there's, there's no, not a lot of uh, requirement for timing or positioning. As you can see, it's a lot of just, like, spamming attacks and just kind of hoping that you can stun lock the enemy better than they can stun lock you. And again, this is with the patched version of the game. And it, so it's a little bit better now, but it used to be even worse when the game first launched. If I were you, I wouldn't venture too far into this cave system. Why not? What's wrong with these caves? We haven't completely explored them yet. Why There's not? There's supposed to be another exit somewhere to the east. Unfortunately, the eastern caves are teeming with beasts. Is this a former mine by any chance? It's possible. But if that is the case, then nothing has been mined here for years. We found these caves the way they are now. We just had to clean them of some cave beasts. What's your job? I'm on guard duty. I'm watching the southern exit of Reddick. In my spare time, I train in the arena for the real thing. Oh, let's fight. I will eliminate the beasts from your eastern passage. That's insane, stranger. You should prepare if you want to have any chance at all. I don't need no- I will just- man, you underestimate me. you fight me. me in the arena? Why not? A little more training can't hurt. Let's do it! Fight with me in the arena. <sighs> Show right. me your goods. But don't forget that this is only a sparring match. We'll meet in the arena. My phone just randomly brought up Google when I said... Show me your goods. Now we'll see who's stronger. Yo, why did you switch out of your? Yeah. Left the arena. Yo, you stop attacking! Me. You won. You literally pushed me out of the arena. I said, put down your weapon. Well, that wasn't much to write home. Go to Nora. No. Show me your. Wait. I want. I thought go. Now. Mm. See, he won that last fight because he got the chain stun on me. 
And I couldn't do anything about it. And he just knocked me out of the ring. You showed him. I won that fight by getting the chain stun on him. It's, it's just so lame. He switched from his halberd to the sword. That's weird. What? I thought I just heard like a scavenger or a mole rat. Something made a noise. It's always the little guy. Well fought. You just knocked me off my feet. Here, have this healing potion. It'll help with your wounds. I don't need no healing potion. There's a bed right there. Show me your goods. Show me your goods. These would be cool if I could get somebody to teach me how to do better. But also, they're really freaking expensive. I'm kind of annoyed that I'm level 4 and I have 40 skill points and basically nobody will teach me anything. Like, I just... Didn't... The one guy that I want to teach me things is like, I'm not telling you, teaching you anything until you do a menial fetch quest. And then the other ones are like, yo, you gotta pay a ton of money that you can't possibly have at this point of the game. I'm just like, oh man, I just, I just want to use the skill points that I've earned. I want to invest in my character and improve. What is that? Is that a lizard? <laughs> Alright, so he got like six or seven hits off. Yeah, okay, it's just a normal lizard. Maybe I can kill it without dying. Probably not. Maybe. Nice. It's really weird that there's an electric guitar in the soundtrack. Because that is not era appropriate, or even genre appropriate, really. I mean, I kind of like it, but definitely not something I would have been expecting after, you know, Gothic 1 and 2 did not use any sort of modern instruments, except, you know, te technically they used, like, modern synthesizers to, uh, with patches to sound like other instruments, but whatever. Teleporter runes are redic. That's clutch. Does this chest just not have a texture on it? I thought it was just in the shadows, but I, just, it just doesn't have a texture. That's kind of funny. In fact. Do any of these rocks have textures? Maybe they kind of do. Gotta sleep for free healing.
I do really like that this game lets you toggle the quick bar on and off. That's neat. Because usually having a quick bar like that is kind of distracting and immersion breaking, but not a lot of other games will let you toggle it on and off like this. So you can have it up when you need to remember, okay, what button does what? Or how many arrows do I have? And then you can put it away when you don't want to have that distraction. And that's really cool. I'm kind of shocked that these guys have not cleared these caves out, because at least so far, none of this is intimidating. I'm level 4, I may as well be level 0 because I've invested zero. oh god. Because I've invested- oh god. Because I've invested zero points in any skills. And yet, I'm killing all this stuff. Alright, I let it kill me that time. My stamina bar was gray, which I think meant that I got, uh, some sort of disease. And I, I, I might have had a cure disease potion, but I really just didn't want to deal with that. So here we are at the fun loading screen. Why yes, hello. Gothic 3 is indeed the pinnacle of the series. You can tell by how great it is. I gotta fight these lizards again. I gotta fight these goblins too? Goodness gracious. Need to save more often. This makes it a lot better. Might make it a little... T Ooh, that's some nice uh, physics there. His head kind of snapped back. Oh god, oh god. How did I get turned around? While thinking about it, do I have potion against disease? Yes, I do. All right. So I got a few of those. So if I get hit by a lizard, not a big deal. If I can hit the lizard, it would, would be a big deal. There's that electric guitar and the soundtrack again. Somewhat uncharacteristic of gothic soundtrack. Oh! That's right, this game has randomized chests. Oh man, that's another thing I don't like about this game is... It kind of makes... Exploration? Okay, the teleporter stone here is a fixed item. But it makes exploration a little less rewarding when so much of the loot is hidden in chests. 
and then it's just kind of random. I'm assuming there's a set value to it, like all of the stuff in the chest will be of so much value, monetary value, or sometimes it might be three magic spells and two weapons or something like that, but that really takes away from the the satisfaction when the rewards are kind of just like rolling the dice and seeing what you get. Because even if things are supposed to be of similar values or whatnot, it's some, some things are still more useful or generally better than others. And that, that that's kind of lame. There, I don't think there's nearly as much if any sort of hand placed loot in this game as compared to Gothic 1 and 2 where it's you know those games were great about especially Gothic 2 about putting unique rewards in unique areas with unique situations like the iconic example is the uh, Dragon Slayer in the cave guarded by the Archons or the Skeleton Lords near the Sun Circle. Like, that's a cool area that you can imagine has a cool little backstory for why the Dragon Slayer would be in that cave guarded by those Archons with the crypts, uh, the coffins of other paladins and warriors and things. And why it would be uh, hovering there in a pillar of golden, or sorry, blue light. It's it's cool, but then in this game it's like... Everything is found in treasure chests. With semi-randomized contents. And so you can't really get as much of a interesting story detail out of that type of loot when it's just something you find randomly in a chest somewhere. About to need to buy some more arrows. Ow! Stop chain stunning me! Goodness gracious. Oh, they're still there. Thought they gave up and went away. Ah. Ah. Thirty-eight arrows left. That's no good. And so that cures the disease, I guess. That was halting my stamina regeneration. Unfortunately, since I'm so low on arrows, I might have to start fighting stuff with a sword. And that's probably no good. Hopefully I'm almost out of this cave, though. Demon shrooms. Oh, metal chest, here we go. So this is... If I can open this. This is the first example of the game's scripted loot progression where basically all of the best weapons... Ah, damn, I can't do it. Basically all of the best uh, weapons and equipment and things are inside special chests, like metal chests and old chests or whatnot, 
and the contents of each individual chest of those special chest varieties is based entirely on how many of those types of chests you have opened previously. So regardless of where you find the chests, hello, the first metal chest you open will have, I don't know what, what it is, but it will have like the same sword, whatever it is, whether you find it in a cave on the coast or in on top of a mountain, whatever. And that is incredibly lame. Because again, it's going back to putting like all of the interesting loot in chests, which are kind of boring to begin with. But also it means that there is like a fixed progression through the game where every time you play, you're always going to get that same loot progression. Oh god, it's a mine crawler. Did not expect that. So a lot of the fun in the gothic games and games like this is being able to find unique rewards in unique areas and especially if you know what you're doing and where you're going to sort of metagame the system and say I know that if I go here I can get this really cool thing that will let me go here and do this and then I can make myself more powerful at an earlier stage of the game than the game intends me to be and you know things like that are fun and satisfying and rewarding and you don't really get that in gothic 3 because you're gonna get the same loot no matter where you go or what you do and that's really lame Unfortunately, since I got hit by a damn lizard again, I gotta take another one of those heal disease potions. Is there anybody here who will sell me arrows? Go mind your own business. What do you want? You won't talk to me anymore? Don't you have anything to do? What's your problem? Why do you sound so rude and Go offended? Go mind your own business. What do you want? I'm supposed to be, like, helping you. I'm trying to join your cause, and you need guys. Why are, why are you being such a jerk? Oh, my goodness. That seems like a design oversight. Like, I don't think... Show me your goods. I think that's supposed to be a generic... Oh, no, don't do that, don't do that. I think that's just supposed to be a generic filler thing, like... If the guy has no dialogue, then... Then they say this line, or whatever it is. Something to that effect. But th then that's also... What the... God, don't... Can I, can I not move an entire stack? Can I just move one at a time? There we go. Right click. Uh, but it's kind of a bit like a design oversight. Where that guy should really not be sounding like that in that context, but because that's the default thing is to say these generic filler lines, it just like, it sounds wrong, and that's the kind of thing where they really should have paid more attention to detail and made sure that that kind of stuff wasn't happening in the game, but I think the reason for that is because with this game being so big and with so much content and them stretching themselves so thin, like, they just don't have the time to meticulously go back and check all of those types of little details in every different area under every different circumstance. And... You know, that's just kind of one of the inherent problems of 
designing a game of this size, especially when you don't have the manpower to really pull it off right. And that's like the big problem with this game is they just bit off more than they could chew and couldn't put in the time or effort to really make it what it should or even could have been. How did that miss? Please don't kill me. Headshot. I want to say this game does give you damage rewards if you hit the head. I don't remember. Oh god, there's a wall behind me. Run away! Also, this archery kiting. I feel like it's kind of, uh... God. Can you... Oh my goodness. <laughs> I got hit once and then all of a sudden it's just boom, 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 dead. Ay, ay, ay. Apparently I can't use the... There it is. That's... I tried hitting the quick load key and it didn't seem to do anything at first. Boy, it's not like this game is dozens of hours long, maybe 60 to 100 hours long, and it's not like you're going to hear that little repetitive intro often enough for it to get annoying. do a better job killing this mine crawler without getting chain stunned to death. Why did I save all the way down there? I saved so far away. Kind of surprised that missed. Sweet. Quest complete. Wasn't that hard. Did none of those fighters have bows? Ranged weapons? Like seriously, the ranged combat sort of trivializes some of these encounters if you can just safely kite enemies like that. Is this the metal ch- oh, it's a heavy chest! It's got a Hashishin knife. Did I save after this? After I killed that thing? I sure hope I did. Because I need to I need to test the the chest randomization. Hmm. 
the heavy chest might be the the special chest that I'm thinking of with the scripted loot progression. The metal chest might just be like a, a more advanced chest. Clean out the southern caves of Redica. Apparently I did save after killing the mine crawler. That's good. All right, so. quick save here. This is the heavy chest. Last time I opened it, it had a hashishin knife and a bunch of random other things. So here I have a hashishin knife and some random other stuff. This amulet is really good. I kind of want that. Flame wave, super valuable. So look at how the approximate value of all this stuff. Now I'm going to reload And it's going to have a Hashishan knife and a bunch of random stuff. Some of it, some of which will probably not be as desirable as Flame Wave or that amulet was. Maybe there will be something better. But point is, this is where, like, the, the loot in this game is kind of... A, two-form factor of disappointment because you get that fixed progression where you have to go through that same progression of weapons through these chests. No matter where you find the chest, it's, it's going to have the same thing in it based on however many you've opened previously, but also that whole randomized element where you're basically just rolling the dice to see what kind of reward you get and hoping that it's something good. Like this gives me protection against missiles, magic ore blank, transformation potion. See overall I think the the value, the gold value of all of this stuff is way less than that last one was. And this is kind of valuable but Man, this is kind of disappointing. And this is where, if you're metagaming the system, then you'll just sit here at a load screen to try to get something good. That's kind of dumb. Hashisha knife. Oh, this is even worse. Look at how crappy this is. Oh my goodness. I'm like, the, the rewards are getting worse and worse. I hate to w w basically waste all his time on load screens just to show this, but I need to show this how bad the randomization is. I thought at least they would have comparable 
some values, like, it's that way each time you open a chest, you're at least going to get roughly the same amount of value out of it, but apparently that's not even the case. I had a chance for a life amulet and a flame wave spell scroll. I probably should have saved that into a separate slot. Summon lightning. See, look at this. This one has... Uh, 3,500 gold value in just these three things right here. That last one that I opened had maybe a thousand or less. This one is over three times as valuable. Maybe even more than the last one I opened. That is completely dumb. Orc Slayer, 50 damage. This one is slightly less, but it is poisoned. So I can maybe... Get a little extra damage over time with that. So depending on what I'm fighting, maybe I'll use the knife instead of the Orc Slayer. Still kind of wanted that life amulet, but can't really turn down the insane amount of value I got out of that last chest. With the, like, almost $4,000 worth of stuff in it. God knows, you need a lot of money in this game. Everything is so expensive. Alright. Where am I right now? I'm somewhere. This map doesn't really help. I'm somewhere... I'm somewhere west of Ardea. For what good that does in helping me navigate. I want to see if I can shoot this deer. Get some meat. Oh, he's not dead. I really thought I could kill him in one shot. Damn. Oh, there's so many deer. How did I miss that? Gotta get the follow-up. Nope, that's not happening. Time to give up on that. What do we got? Cape done. Need to go there eventually. Alright, see, this is like... More of what I mean with big, open, sort of empty spaces. There's all this space here, and there's... Really nothing going on. There's like... Deer wandering around. And there's not even, like, a plant up here. Man. I really thought there would be something hidden in this little alcove. Why do they do this to me? I think this over here is the... orc farm that I'm supposed to... go... liberate? Something like that. So I might want to go do that and fulfill a, fulfill a quest to maybe get some more weapon bundles so that I can... Oh god. So that I can get some combat training. You see how that hungry wolf just chain stunned that scavenger? That scavenger stands no chance. Now I will chain stun the wolf. This is advanced combat tactics. 
Just spam the quick attack button until they die. It's great. This is pointing me to Ardea. Yep. Alright, so we got a few orcs here. Where's my quick save button? There it is. Got any uh, bundles of weapons? Could really use some of those. Oh, maybe this guy's the blacksmith. Don't fool around here, stranger, or the orcs will punish us. What are you doing here? I'm a slave to the orcs. They make me work as a woodcutter. You look and sound floor. exactly like exactly like Hamlar from here, Ardea. Even though I'm actually a blacksmith, damn it. But a smith doesn't count for much with the orcs if he's only human. I'm surprised I remember this stuff. Like, it's been so long since I've played this game. You're a blacksmith? Can you teach me your art then? Ha! <laughs> How can I do that without a forge? I'm sorry, but that's asking too much. Find me a smithy with no orcs around and I will show you whatever I can. I see. I will set you free. I will set you free. Balderdash. The orcs are going to skin you alive. I think you underestimate my ability to chain stun orcs with quick attacks. What is up, Topork? Let's have a chat. What are you doing here, Mora? Shouldn't you be working in the fields? I hope for your sake that you already have an owner. Otherwise, you belong to me now. I'd like to see you um, enforce your ownership. Ha! <laughs> I have to go. My owner is waiting for me. Uh, I'm just going to fight him. I have come to challenge you to a duel. <laughs> Pretty cocky of you, little man. But whatever you want, you'll have your fight. No one beats me. He just more. gets. No, we go no, right into combat no, mode here. He never even got his uh, his weapon drawn. What? Nope. Don't sit on. Nope. Don't do that. I want to loot to pork. I'm gonna take his Krushagash and his uh, 67 gold. I think I'm really supposed to kill him. And all the orcs for the... Is he dead? He shouldn't be, it was a duel. Ah, there we go. My bones. My bones. You fought well, Mora. Boy, this what is a camera angle. What do you want for winning your fight? Give me your slave. I want your slave. I want your slave out there. He isn't worth a successful fight, Mora. You disappoint me. But if you want him, you can have him. And now go. I have things to do. He says, as he goes to sit on his throne and do nothing. So I think my quest is to actually just kill all of these orcs. Gotta kill them all? I don't know if I can... if there's anything to it other than just, like, attacking them. I think I'll just attack them. There is a point in this game where these factions will start just like aggroing you on site. They turn hostile if your reputation with their opposite faction gets too high. Put away your weapon. I think no. I can safely do this. Right, is he dead? How do I kill him? There we go. Murder it. Right click spam. Let up. Oh god, he, I did not expect another guy to jump in the fire. 
Oh, I might actually lose this. What are you doing? What? Yeah! Why did my guy just sit there? I really want to feel like I'm playing Bloodborne or even Risen or something that has like a dodge button. I ain't got no dodge button in this game. Yeah! Run away! Oh god, I can't move fast enough. There we go. Stop right there, Mora! Got one. Oh, he almost got me. Oh, oh. And I'm dead. Was that all? That was so clumsy and awkward. And the music cut out. That's so awkward when it does that. There's got to be like a better way to, to crossfade those tracks rather than just a harsh end on the previous one. Maybe they shouldn't even like switch tracks in a load screen because that's just really distracting when that happens. And I gotta do a better Put job. Put away your weapon! Oh, you! Oh, wait, his health regenerated. Nothing to be had. Nothing to be had there. Now it is his turn to chain stun me. Now that was significantly easier for some reason. I don't really know. Anything else in here? Oh, the chest, yeah. An empty... F it's... Oh, okay, look, the... Item is called a vial, but then it's... The description calls it a file. That's weird. Okay, and I guess since I murdered... Tope pork these things are oh god it's like some skyrim stuff it's like the giants that send you into low earth orbit god ah that's so funny okay hey get back here i have to i need some bacon That pig is so, so lucky. Well, I guess since I murdered a toe pork, those guys are considered hostile and I didn't have to do the killing animation on them. You are free now. No, he's mine. He's my slave now. You are free now. Thank you. I thought I was going to die. The rebels in Reddick are in need of a blacksmith. Hey, that's wonderful. Finally, I get to work as a smith again. But I don't even know where to find this place, Reddick. I will take you I to Javier. I will take you to Javier. He's in charge in Reddick. Thank you very much, stranger. Let me know when it's time to go. Isn't that supposed to be... I'll take you out of here. Good. Isn't Javier supposed to be like a, an actual name in... I don't, I don't know what culture that would be. Maybe Spain. Central America. 
maybe France, but I feel like Javier, Javier would be a real name and would not be pronounced Javier or Javier, however they say it. Alright, so just gotta take Cliff back to here, turn in a couple quests. Do I have enough weapon bundles? Five, I think I do. Yeah, turn in a few quests. Wait, that's my Hashishan knife? My Hashishan knife is the same length as my Orc Slayer. Interesting. Alright, so we got Cliffy Cliffy Boy following me. Wow. Ah. Sometimes this camera like just randomly spazzes out on me. freeze save button. Alright. Maybe Javier will talk to me now. Cliff is a blacksmith and will work for you from now on. You did well, stranger. Now we can resupply our weapon stock. Don't you have anything to do? I thought so. Norris is green here are five bundles of weapons very good that will help here is some gold for your trouble would you teach me how to fight all right so he can teach me a bunch of skills I've got 60 learning points and 1300 gold. I don't really have any stronger melee weapons except for the large weapons, which are kind of OP anyway. How did I not realize I had this this ice amulet? Um, uh, I guess I'll just. Would you teach me? How like, what does being a stronger swordsman do? The hero is a strong sword fighter. I don't know what that means. Does that add damage to my thing? Does it add critical hit capacity? Does it give me extra attack combos? I gotta have 150 strength to learn large weapon combos. Would you teach me how to fight? Oh my god, I'm not even going to be able to learn large weapon combat. You aren't ready for that. Good. This is so expensive. Good. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> Good. You don't have enough gold with you. Oh my gosh. Not only am I... I think I have enough learning points to increase my strength. Because I had, what, 60? So I would need to spend 50 of that. Yeah, I would have enough learning points, but I don't have nearly enough gold. All right, how do I get more gold? And how do I stop walking around? Can I... How did I... How did I get stuck in walk mode? What in the world? All right, Sprint did it. Thank you very much, stranger. I will never forget what you did for me. Take this as a token Can of Can you give me gratitude. like 2,000 bucks? Eh, 300 Show is me your goods. better than nothing. Oh, he's got 7,000 gold. I wouldn't mind getting a rapier and being like a hunting, specializing in the hunting skill, but I just, there's like no, I haven't found any hunting trainers yet. Uh, two-hander, rusty two-hander. I should probably keep one two-hander. Sell the worn orc slayer. Man, these orc weapons are kind of valuable. Uh, gold balance. Oh, I just keep selling them. Give me all your money. They're all like basically the same item, but just with different crests on them. I guess. <sighs> Casket. I think there's a guy in here I can maybe sell that stuff for. Uh, Alright. Go mind your own business. Wait. Would you t carry on? That's the way. <clears throat> carry on like that. Good. Now you remember, like in Gothic One, when you learn how to improve your sword skills, and Scaddy like explains to you. He he, as a character, he actually teaches you how to fight better by saying, "Hey." Hold your sword like this. That's a rookie mistake. Hold it like this. Swing the sword like that. Shift the weight around here. Do a combo with like three strikes or whatever. This guy just says, good. Yeah, just like that. What does that even mean? He's not teaching me anything. I mean, mechanically, he is, Would but you teach like, me how to fight? in terms of the... I don't even know how you describe it, like, the narrative aspect, the the, com the character aspect, he's not really teaching me anything. Show me how to handle a battle axe. A battle axe. Grip the axe, axe firmly with both Here hands. Here we go. And make sure that you have a solid stance. A couple of strong blows, always at the body, should be enough to knock down any opponent. That was better. That was more like it. Still not quite as developed as what, like, Scatty would teach you, but better than I was thinking. Whoops. Ah. And so now we have the most OP weapon in the game, the Halberd. Who's... How do I do the spin attack? 
I remember there being a spin attack. That, the spin attack might be like a... That might be a level up sort of thing where I have to get large weapon 2 combo. How do I do that? Oh, there it is. It's just hold right click and then short press left click. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna... I don't want to mess with that. I think I kind of want to do the hunting skills and try to use the bow and arrow. I just gotta find me a hunter. I think I, there's a guy sort of up near a stone circle north, northwest of uh, Ardea, sort of overlooking the barrier of Vanguard. I think he might be able to teach me some of that stuff. Oh, we're still here, okay. Hey, Javier. Click you now. Thank you. Alright, I gotta sell all this crap again. That's not my Orc Slayer, is it? Like, not the one that I have equipped. Put down your weapon. Oh, I'm dude, going to it. You're smarter than you look. Shh. Must be a different Orc Slayer. Wait, the Hashishan knife is in the inventory. So, equipped or weapons that are on my hotbar can potentially go in here. Is my... Alright. So because it was currently equipped, I did not sell it. So it can be on the hot bar and be sold. Show me. But if it's equipped on your body, it will not get sold. Seems to be the verdict. I want to say at some point in this game there's a quest where I need to bring orc weapons to somebody. So I might regret selling some of these, but who really cares? I need money. Equip, thank you. Ooh, a water barrel, I can heal myself. A tiny little bit at a time, or I can just go sleep in a bed. Kinda makes you wonder why they put water barrels in the game like that, if they're gonna heal so little when you would rather just sleep in a bed. And also, if there are situations where there is a water barrel nearby, but no, um, no bed, as long as there's no enemies around, there's really nothing stopping you from just sitting there for five minutes chugging water. In which case, you may as well just make it a heal, a full heal, instead of making the player sit through 
the same uh, tedious animation over and over again. Show me. What's he got? World map, lock picks. Do I? How many lock picks do I have? I have eleven. He's got a lot of money. Interesting. Silver of Goblet has a value of 60, but he buys it at 120. Casket has a value of 45, he buys it at 90. So I guess he was not joking about taking higher prices on these things. All right, that's kind of cool. I will sell you my jewels and things of that nature. Wait, did I not turn this in? Looks like I didn't turn in the weapon bundles. There we go. Here are five bundles of weapons. Very good. That will help. Here is some gold for your trouble. All right. That's almost all the quests in uh, Reddick. I just gotta get like this orc patrol, which I think is actually kind of just north of here. But I think I'm going to call it quits for today. This is not a bad stopping point. Done a bunch of quests in here. Oh, let me the see. York I Patrol on the in. farm is no more. Thanks be to Enos. That troop really gave me a headache. I really Lens don't want to know how flare. you did. Well done, anyway. Here's a share of our gold, stranger. Why do you have so much gold? Ah, uh, yeah, but this seems like a pretty good stopping point since I'm about to head out from here. Let me grill up some meat. I wish I could skip that sitting down and putting the meat on the skewer animation. That's so slow. Uh, but yeah, so it's got a fair amount done in this session. But when I next time I play, I think I'm gonna head up sort of north-ish and look for that hunter guy. Kill the orc patrol at the thingamajigger nearby and then sort of head over to Cape Dunn I guess and start working on quests there. So thanks for watching folks. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna start preparing to go to sleep. I'll catch you next time. Be on the lookout and see you later.